I hate to use the painting analogy again. No one goes, I'm gonna make a lot of money by being a painter. If it happens, it happens. And of course, it usually happens after you're dead. And with improv, it happens after your soul is dead. And then you've written 15 Captain Fartman sketches and it becomes a movie and now you're rich. Um, with improv, it's more, I make a living off improv, knock on wood. And I do it not through improvisation. I do it because I teach and I own the shows I produce. And I make sure those shows, A, make money, B, have a contract that guarantees money from the theater. A lot of people forget that it is a business and they put up a show, we're gonna put up a show! And it runs for six months, then they ask, what's your contract like with whatever theater they're with? And like, we don't have a contract, we just do shows. So you decided to just give that guy your money. And that always bothers me, because it's just lack of asking someone. You know people, ask. And no one will begrudge a question. That's one of the nice things about improv. It's very helpful. There are other creators in similar predicaments as I, and we get together and we talk about taxes, and we talk about um, contracts, and how to compensate our players, things like that. Um, it's hard. It's My advice to people moving to Chicago is always, there's no such thing as a starving artist. It, it was romantic in France in the 1800s. It is not romantic now. Have a job, have health care. When the showbiz picks up so much that you have to quit your day job, you won't care about that other stuff because it'll be, it'll be handled for you. Uh, but saying I can't take an office job now in case I get auditions is dumb. That's what I tell them.